For me, the most exciting aspect of this new telescope is really the breadth of science we'll be able to do. We'll be able to study objects from within our own solar system all the way out to the most distant galaxies ever, the very first galaxies that were born after the Big Bang, and everything in space and time in between. And these first images that we've just released really just give us a glimpse, just a hint of what's gonna be possible with this incredible new telescope. I'm so excited for, uh, for the year of science that we already have planned, and I have no doubt that this telescope is really going to change the way that we understand the universe in ways that we haven't even dreamed of yet. The James Webb Space Telescope captured the iconic pillars of creation, huge structures of gas and dust teeming with stars, and the image is as majestic as one could hope. The twinkling of thousands of stars illuminates the telescope's first shot of the gigantic gold, copper, and brown columns standing in the midst of the cosmos. NASA said in a statement, At the ends of several pillars are bright red, lava-like spots. These are ejections from stars that are still forming. Only a few hundred thousand years old, these young stars periodically shoot out supersonic jets that collide with clouds of material, like these thick pillars. The pillars of creation are located 6,500 light years from Earth, in the Eagle Nebula of our Milky Way galaxy. The pillars were made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope, which first captured them in 1995 and then again in 2014. But thanks to Webb's infrared capabilities, the newer telescope launched into space less than a year ago can peer through the opacity of the pillars, revealing many new stars forming. Klaus Pontapadan, the science program manager at the Space Telescope Science Institute, said Wednesday on Twitter, By popular demand, we had to do the pillars of creation with Webb. NASA astrophysicist Amber Strawn summed it up, The universe is beautiful. There are just so many stars. The image, covering an area of about eight light years, was taken by Webb's primary imager NIR cam, which captures near-infrared wavelengths invisible to the human eye. The colors of the image have been translated into visible light. According to NASA, the new image will help researchers revamp their models of star formation by identifying far more precise counts of newly formed stars, along with the quantities of gas and dust in the region. Operational since July, Webb is the most powerful space telescope ever built and has already unleashed a raft of unprecedented data. Scientists are hopeful it will herald a new era of discovery. One of the main goals for the $10 billion telescope is to study the life cycle of stars. Another main research focus is on exoplanets, planets outside Earth's solar system. What is the difference between Hubble and James Webb photograph? Well, Hubble has been such an amazing observatory for humanity for decades now, and there are some things where Hubble has just given us a glimpse. We have a hint. We think that there's something there and we're very excited. Now with JWST, we'll finally get to the answers in some of these incredible questions like what's inside the atmospheres of these exoplanets we're finding? How far back can we see towards the dawn of the universe? So it's a step we've been wanting to take for a really long time. So it's very exciting that we're finally here and the telescope is performing as well as it is. The Hubble Space Telescope has been orbiting Earth since 1990, expanding human vision into deep space and giving us images like this. 1. The thing is, every Hubble image you see started out black and white. That's because Hubble's main function is to measure the brightness of light reflecting off objects in space, which is clearest in black and white. Seeing an object as it would appear to our scientists also use it to map out how different gases interact in the universe to form galaxies and nebulae. Hubble can record very narrow bands of light coming from individual elements like oxygen and carbon and use color to track their presence in an image. This is called narrowband filtering. The most common application of narrowband filtering isolates light from hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, three key building blocks of stars. Hubble's most famous example of this is called the Pillars of Creation, which captured huge towers of gas and dust forming new star systems. But this isn't a true color image. The background of this Hubble image is like a sunrise, beginning in yellows at the bottom, before transitioning to light green and deeper blues at the top. These colors highlight the thickness of the dust all around the pillars, which obscures many more stars in the overall region. In Webb's image, the background light appears in blue hues, showing the hydrogen atoms better. By offering a better view of the dusty pillars, Webb's image helps scientists identify stars that just burst free or are about to. Near-infrared light offers much more information. James Webb will bring much more interesting information in the coming days. Stay tuned for new information and keep exploring.